Welcome to this episode of Fort Worth Forward. We're here at the Fort Worth Botanic Garden where we're going to interview Patrick Newman, who's the CEO and president of the garden, as well as Steve Montgomery with the Fort Worth Chamber and Melinda Hamilton, founder of Mothers of Murdered Angels. The garden is great. Let's get inside and start these interviews. Now I'm here with Patrick Newman, who is CEO and president of the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. That's sometimes a mouthful, isn't it? It is. I'm still getting used to it, but yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm not the only one yeah. there, but thank, thank you for being here today. We're in your lovely facilities. Yeah. It, this is a rough place to work. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I can see that. Thank I mean... you for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah. No, thanks. You. And your team put all this together out here just this morning. So yeah, we, have a great we, have, we really do have the best team here. Um, I, we're just, we're fortunate to have great horticulturists in Fort Worth. Yes. Um, and just really great people. So kudos to the team. Thanks. Absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit about your story, how you got here to Fort Worth. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, really my, my sort of track to Fort Worth and to public gardens begins years and years ago. I, my first experience with a public garden or a botanic garden was uh, when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. My grandmother took me to visit a garden for the first time. And that, uh, th that experience really was sort of inspirational for me and it started me on a, a path of inquiry. I devoured science as a kid, ended up at the university, knew I would study science, thought I wanted to be a doctor and then I took a, a plant physiology class um, as an undergrad and remembered plants have always been a part of my life. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I graduated from college, tried to figure out how to make a career out of plants, joined the Peace Corps to kind of refine my, yeah. my career goals. Where did you serve in the Peace Corps? I was in Azerbaijan with okay. my wife. Yeah, okay. we were we were the first group of volunteers in, and that's a whole other story okay. for another okay. day. Were y'all married at the time? We were. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we were okay. married. It was sort of an extended honeymoon for us, but okay. it was awesome. That's I mean, great. tremendous experience. Sure. Came back from that and knew that what I really wanted to do career-wise was help people to kind of arrive at that intersection of people and plants. There's a ton of inspiration. Sure. There's a ton of hope. There's a, a lot to be learned. There's immense power in that intersection. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to help people get to that intersection and arrive at, at that power. And so came back uh, from the Peace Corps, started working at Red Butte Garden back at my alma mater at the University of Utah. Okay. Did that for like a decade. Got recruited to come down to, um, University of Texas recruited me to come down to Austin. Yeah. Worked at Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center, which was an amazing experience. Yes. Did that for a number of years. And then in um, late 2020, I got a phone call. They said, hey, there's some exciting things happening in Fort Worth with Britt and the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. Mm -hmm. um, you know, would you be interested? And I'm no fool. Of course, yeah. I saw the opportunity and said, um, you know, let's do this. And here I am a couple years later, loving Fort Worth, loving Britt, loving the Botanic Garden. This is amazing. That's wonderful. And, yeah. and, and you kind of came in after there'd been a little controversy about yeah. this, how that had come, how to come together. Yep. You know, there was a lot, it was pre me on the council. So, yep. but work through a lot of that, but it was really about putting the investment back in this yeah. garden. Yeah. Um, I grew up coming here. I, you know, my wife's bridal portraits are just, <laughs> were taken just over here. Yeah. So I think all of us had an affinity, all Fort Worthians, there's certain, certain places that this is my this, Fort Worth. This is one of them. This is one of them for yeah. sure. And we got through that and, and now we're working through, you've developed, de helped develop this master plan. Yeah. So tell us about that and how yeah, that Yeah, we're together. really excited about that. I mean, I think it, it, to me that showcases the public private investment in this yeah. place uh, and what we've been able to do with this new arrangement. Um, we're thrilled about the master plan. Uh, I mean, there's, there's some key projects. One right now that we're really excited about is the family garden. The Baker okay. Martin family garden uh, is a two acre garden that is designed for children and the adults that they bring with them. Okay. So, um, I mean, interactive play spaces, really kind of a fun zone for, for children to come and create emotional souvenirs with parents and grandparents. That's the first piece that will kick off. Okay. Um, and we are, I mean, we are in, in full force working on that right now. Okay. Um, you know, I think one of the other beloved programs here at the garden is the, the partnership we have with Symphony Orchestra mm -hmm. and concerts in the garden. Fun times during the summer. And so we're, you know, we, we realized along with the symphony that we need to have a permanent structure if we're going to make that economically viable and, and really look at something long term. So that's another exciting project. We'll put a, a permanent stage facility in and really that allows us to do even more than just symphony and orchestra. We can yeah. bring additional music, performance art, movies, all kinds of things. So I think I see the garden becoming more of a cultural hub for those types of activities as well. Um, new entry experience, um, I mean, new garden spaces. It, the, the master plan is a, it's probably gonna take us 20 years to do all of it, but there are so many inspirational moments in that master plan and the opportunity to continue to, to really preserve key spaces like the Rose Garden, like the Japanese Garden that are beloved, rightfully so, by so many in our community. For sure. No, yeah. thank you uh, for that. You kind of talked about, I mean, the facade out front will yeah. change. I yeah. mean, it'll just be just 
from the moment you leave university, a different experience when yes. you come in, right? Yeah, I think, and, and I think people get a sense of that. One of the projects we just completed, which again was a public-private partnership with the city, was converting Old Garden Road, you know, one mm -hmm. of the one of the old asphalt roads in the garden, to a beautiful pedestrian promenade. So we brought the plant material in, uh, we converted the asphalt to kind of cut stone and concrete. It, it really sort of invites you towards the Japanese garden, kind of pulls you in that direction. And so really kind of, we're not making wholesale changes, but we're refining what we have here right. and really sort of elevating the experience for our guests. That's wonderful. So yeah. you've talked a little bit about there, but there's 23, I think, specialty gardens. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite? Uh, why don't you ask me which of my children is my favorite? That, <laughs> might, that might be easier. Um, I, I, you know, I have a couple of I have a couple of, uh, of areas that are near and dear to my heart. Um, I love the Japanese garden. Yeah. Uh, honestly, that's one of the things that brought me to Fort Worth. When I was you know, interviewing for this job and we were touring the area, I walked through the Japanese garden and thought, if the city of Fort Worth can build something like this, mm -hmm. there's nothing this city can't do. That's right. I, I, you know, that, that to me is probably one of the top five Japanese gardens in the country. Really? Yeah, and then you look at the history of the Rose Garden, mm -hmm. and if a city can build, maintain, and, and really preserve a space like that, that generations have, mm -hmm. have walked away from that space with powerful emotional souvenirs wedding photos, engagement portraits, dates, proposals, those sort of things are happening in that space. And so um, I love those too, but for me, there's a, there's a corner of the perennial garden that is it's just sort of a quiet space mm -hmm. that when, um, you know, we're looking at my office, when it's a really hard day here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I like to kind of just sort of retreat to that space. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an opportunity to kind of collect my thoughts and really experience the quiet joys that can only be found in nature. Found. Yeah. What, what you kind of, but what, what are some of the challenges you know that you're going to face? <laughs> um, Which then you can have some respite super, here yeah, at the exactly. garden, right? Uh, you know, I think some of our, our challenges are we are a part of a vibrant and growing community, mm -hmm. and um, you know there's a demand for the garden, and, and we want to meet that demand. Um, and I think we want to be open to the idea that this community is growing not only in size but in its diversity. Yes. And so, how do we provide spaces, programs, opportunities for every corner of the community to feel welcome and feel like they authentically belong? Mm. And for us, that's a you know that's a, a both a challenge and a tremendous opportunity. Sure. I think it's part of the promise of this space. I mean, you talked about it. I mean, people have have been coming to this garden for a long time. Yeah. And we want people that are new to the community to come to the garden as well. And feel welcome. And feel welcome mm -hmm. and feel like they belong here. So, you know, one of our challenges is how do we how do we bring exhibits and programs in that invite new parts of the community um, and continue to serve those who are already sort of part of our choir, if you will. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, it, it is a, it, we're 120 acres, so it's large. Right. Um, and then we were founded in 1934, so it's an aging facility in some ways too. Yeah. So how do you preserve, how do you maintain, how do you expand, um, and how do you find the funds to do all of that? Which I think the great opportunity is this, this great public-private partnership that we have with the city of Fort Worth. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, I appreciate uh, you taking a little chance on Fort Worth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and coming, coming, coming here and, and all you're doing too in appreciate the community, it. for sure. This is a, a place for people to come again, generations, as you've already yeah. said, come here, have memories here, feel it's uh, a, a home of sorts. Yeah. And we've worked out lots of ways for people to come for free on yep. different days, yep. et cetera. Yep. Just understood now you have dog dog days where dogs yeah, yeah, can yeah. come. Yeah, we're, we we're extending our guest profile to four-legged friends, so yes. There, <laughs> there you go, so all those, things. anybody, yeah. anyway. Well, yeah. thanks, Patrick, thanks. Where can people find you? Yeah, I think the best way to find out you know, what we have going on uh, would be our website, um, which is fwbg.org. Okay. You'll find all the information you need about admission, hours, what programs we have, like our Lightscape exhibit that we're running now, yeah. which exhibits are coming, butterflies in the garden, dinosaurs, all those things all the hit programs. us up on the website great yep. well thanks for being here today really yeah, appreciate you. you appreciate your leadership yeah thank you thank you and now i'm here with steve gubbery who is the president and ceo of the fort worth chamber welcome steve thank you very much council member i uh, enjoy Michael. being here yeah thanks thanks uh you, we've been friends for a long time yes sir uh and i'm really proud of you now that you're in this new role thank you thank how you. let's tell everybody how you ended up or in this new role. Absolutely. So I didn't wake up on January 1st of this year thinking this is the year I'm going to go around <laughs> the Fulver Chamber of Commerce. But I truly believe when the opportunity came up, I looked at the, the job description and it read a lot about the way my career has gone. It's, I've been involved in business all my career. I've been involved, involved in public policy uh, and in politics and I'm very active in my community. And as I read the job description, it just really resonated with me. And it really feels, feels like that the chamber is at that, that intersection of public policy, of business, and of community. And, uh, and I'm a firm believer that a high-performing, well-functioning chamber has true civic value. 
and my fidelity and commitment to Fort Worth run very deep. Yeah. And I'm passionate about the success of this community, as I know you are. Yeah. And it just felt like the perfect fit and the perfect opportunity. So I threw my name in the hat, and in a moment of weakness, they <laughs> selected me. No, not at all. You have been a champion for Fort Worth in the area for a long period of time. So it's a, a natural sort of fit. Um, and we've worked together on different projects yes, and sir. things. and always uh, very professional and, and have that um, idea of making Fort Worth a better place in mind. And so let's talk about how you see the chamber growing and the, the yes. growth and everything that's happening here in Fort Worth. So what I'm focused on uh, in my few months there is trying to, how do we uh, define and communicate and deliver membership value, Okay. right? My members run the gambit from a small mom and pop coffee shop to our largest employers. And so how do I serve and, and, and deliver membership value to them? And if I'm a small operator, a uh, small businessman, and my heart and soul is with small businesses, mm -hmm. you know, how do I help them grow their business? Um, it might be a permitting issue with the city, helping, yep. them, help, helping them get success there, or networking with potential customers. Uh, if I'm a large employer or my member is a large employer, how do I help them with some workforce and talent issues, working with our credentialing entities? Um, so membership value is my overarching theme. Okay. Which is what anybody who joins a professional organization, association wants to see. Ideally, yes Yeah, sir. ideally. The, uh, I'm glad you talked about small businesses and it, that's a passion of mine. I mean, when we, yes. you know, we created last, I've created the Small Business Task Force, which we've now rolled back into the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, I, the permitting has always been a real issue. Sure. And, and big corporations have the resources uh, it doesn't mean we don't focus on that too, but they have the resources to kind of maneuver their way they through. Do. Small businesses don't. So I'm really proud you're focusing on that, Thank at you. least Thank as a tenant of what we're doing. And I think that members could find value in I that. I believe so, yeah. I really do. You know, if you look at some of our uh, peer agent uh, chambers around the state, Dallas and Houston, you know, they have focused more on their large employers, uh, I think to, the, to, their, to their detriment. Uh, Fort Worth is different. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the vibrancy of our local economy uh, really helps and is driven by small business. Right, right. And I, I think it's, we always look at it as an either or, but it's really not, it's a both and. Absolutely. That you can help both. 100%. When you took the role, you, you highlighted some focus areas. Yes. And you want to talk about those? I do. Yeah. So, you know, there, uh, these are ways that we want to activate our membership. And, and if I talk to my members, large and small, their number one issue that they tell me that they face is workforce and talent. How do they attract talent? How do they, re do they retain talent? So how do I activate my membership and the chamber play a role in helping communicate between the credentialing entities, the, the schools, yep. uh, with our demand side, which are the employers, and other areas that have direct nexus to economic development, obviously infrastructure and mobility. Yep. Um, veterans, uh, there's a lot of energy behind helping veteran entrepreneurs, yes. veterans translate their skills into the, the civilian workplace. Uh, issues of small business, again, yep. activating our members in that regard. And then uh, veterans issues, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, homelessness issues. Yes. There are, um, there's, there's more and more we're getting feedback from our members in terms of how homelessness impacts their ability to do commerce. Yes. yes. And there's great models about that. And we want to engage in a productive, constructive manner. Right. Um, and so that's, these are just ways to activate our memberships, to, members to get them into the dialogue, to get them into the conversation, maybe glean some of their great ideas to help policymakers such as yourself come up with some solutions. That's great. I mean, uh, you've hit on a lot of topics. We're talking about it on a, a council and yes. with the city. Homeless was one of the things we just talked about too. Um, it does affect businesses mm -hmm. and we can do what some other cities have done and just sort of like, well, you can be anywhere, right. but then they have to dial that back. I think we've taken a very constructive approach here. I agree. You know, housing first, looking at the services needed and then figuring out uh, from there how we continue to look at affordability and the other places parts Agreed. of it, mental health and other things that Absolutely. we're investing in. So Absolutely. appreciate your leadership there. What excites you about what's going on in Fort Worth? You know, uh, Michael, there's so many things that if I look in every direction in Fort Worth, if you look, if you start downtown, you know, the, the south part of, of downtown with A&M campus and, and the, think the great growth that's going on there with the, the convention center and the Omni and all the great things there. If you look east, East Lancaster corridor, mm -hmm. the revitalization of that is going to be very, very, very transformative. Exciting, yeah. Uh, go north, you know, north side, if you obviously Panther Island, you look at north side, you look at the stockyard, all the way up to Alliance, there's tremendous growth and transformation. Look west and there's contiguous land out there that's just ripe for a major corporate relocation. Right. Uh, and the growth is phenomenal. In, in south, there's, there's phenomenal growth. 
So you look in every direction, it's like we're at the threshold of so many incredible opportunities. That's right. And I just love to see this. In, in, in our best efforts and our best minds, we can still get some things wrong. So mm -hmm. I think we all need to work collaboratively, focus on the things that matter, because we don't want to lose the authenticity of Fort Worth, yes. right? Growth is coming. Do we want it to define us or do we want to define it? And we're, by working collaboratively, I think we can retain our auth authenticity while still benefiting from the growth. Yeah, for sure. Now, I'm glad you have that perspective because we are, we've got to look at all parts of the city, right? Yes. Uh, market all parts of the city and, right. and it's and, and invest in all parts of the city and yes. I think we're trying to do that what are the challenges you see coming ahead so managing that growth right yeah. it, the, determining sure. defining articulating that growth is, is a challenge uh, it's a great challenge to have it's a great yeah. problem to have uh, you know we we need to make sure that we're, we're meeting the educational needs of our employers the, on the workforce side uh, we have great partners out there that are all focused on the right things I, I believe in that regard um, maintaining the right uh, business climate on a policy uh, side of things. Um, so I'm, I'm very optimistic. Yeah. Uh, there's really nothing that scares me other yeah. than, uh, than me not doing my job. That's right, that's right. And I think it's worth noting, you know, we, it, Chambers changed a little bit. Yes. There's been a new partnership created, Economic Development Partnership. Yes. And a little bit, so that's given you the ability, tell, tell us about that, how, what it kind of gives you the ability to do, focus. And, yeah, absolutely, and I could not be more thrilled right. about it. When the executive board of the, the chamber created that separate entity earlier this year, and they brought in the best and the brightest with Robert Allen, I, I, that signaled to me that they were very serious about how, they're, how they're, we're gonna do this. Right. And really concentrating on that in, in the best way possible. For the chamber, that means returning to the fundamentals of membership value, retention and expansion, uh, member benefits, programming, mm -hmm. and focusing on those core functions that a chamber, any good chamber should be doing. But we're also innovating uh, in the areas of business intelligence, making sure we're providing data to our and, and analytics to our members to help them make better business decisions, okay. help policymakers make bit, yep. better business decisions. So, those are things that I think the chamber can focus on in a really great way, and truly br bring value to our community. That's wonderful. Thanks for being here. How 100%. can people find you? Uh, our website, www.fortworthchamber.com. Good, Steve, thank you. Thanks for what you're doing and appreciate you being here today. Thank you for your leadership. Thank, appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. We're back. I'm now here with Melinda Hamilton, who is the founder of Mothers of Murdered Angels. Welcome, Melinda. Thank you for having me, Mike. Uh, of course, we've been old friends, <laughs> right? <laughs> a long time, a long time. I, um, you're originally from Fort Worth. Yes. Tell me your story, like what you, yeah. Where I've been, what I've done. Well, yeah, I yes, am. yes, okay. yeah. Uh, yes, I was uh, born here yeah. in Fort Worth. Yeah. My father retired after the Air Force. Uh, we had been to Kansas and we came back to retired at Carswell Air Force Base. Yeah, Carswell. I've been there and I graduated Carter Riverside okay. High School. Go. And I also graduated from college at U of H. Okay. Came here, had a family, uh, two daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time and then I ended up with four daughters with my husband and everything so uh, after that uh, I'm a mother a grandmother and a great-grandmother wow now, okay you know, so, okay uh, I uh, retired from UPS okay national accounts in a county uh -huh. I was accountant and after that after I retired I started doing my community service mm -hmm. and community work in the uh, neighborhoods uh, I was president of the Carver Heights East for over 15 years. Okay. I am president of the East Fort Worth Neighborhood Coalition. Okay. And then um, after doing all of that, um, I ended up with Mothers of Murdered Angels. Yeah. So tell, tell us how that came about and the tragic story and yes. what happened. Uh, Mothers of Murdered Angels came in, well, in 2020, but it all started in 2018. Okay. My daughter, uh, Shamika, was uh, killed in drive-by shooting where 10 people got shot, but two of them got killed and wow. one was my daughter. Well, sorry. So after that, uh, two years later, never expecting that either to happen, I lost my grandson mm. in Arlington. Some bullies shot him in the back, mm. four, four guys uh, shot him in the back. So that was in February of 2020. Yeah. So in July of 2020, I said enough was enough. Yeah. I started my nonprofit because I know what me and my family went through and all of the different hurdles mm. we had to go through. So. I started Mothers of Murdered Angels by helping parents that have lost their loved ones through gun violence. So I help them with the burial. I start with the burial. Yeah, some of the services and resources you yeah. provide. My uh, uh, resources, uh, 
the victim's assistance. We mm -hmm. also work with them. I work with the courts, with the DAs and all of that, uh, go with the families, have meetings with them. And uh, after that, whatever else they need, we, our group, we make sure that they have that. And some of the survivors right now are part of my group now, mm -hmm. and we have brief sessions. We do trauma and counseling. We also have different organizations that also offer my victims free counseling and services like that. So that you said you you said burial service like just the basic. I'm sure when it happens, it's shock. They don't yes. know what's happening. You yes, went through this yourself. Because at that time, you know, you don't know what to do, and if it's of course, if it's your first time, mm -hmm. you're a young person, you don't know what to do. Your head is not there. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we do, we wait till they come to us. We don't just like an ambulance chaser. We're not that. <laughs> yeah. We wait for the family or someone to come to us. But now we're. We're getting more, you know, people coming. More recognition, so people know that your services are available. Uh, but it's, we're here to help. Mm -hmm. It's not like we enjoy it, but it's it helps. We help sure. each other, you know. Yeah. And uh, so that's what we do right now. And now we're going to the schools and talking to the kids about the awareness of bullying yeah. and the gun violence because it starts by being a, a bully. bully. You're right. And then it escalates to yeah. the guns or whatever so we've been going to some of the schools and we have been we have uh, passed a couple of, uh, we passed a bill last year yes tell us about that victims assistance okay. uh, where if you have to relocate mm -hmm. there wasn't funding for that okay so because my daughter experienced that mm -hmm. you know if you're staying in a condo or something like that and you're leasing mm -hmm. you have 30 days to get out of that location mm -hmm. even if it's not your fault right because they say it's the safety for the other residents. Sure. So uh, the bill that we passed for victims assistance, mm -hmm. give them extra monies to move to a, either a new location or out of the state. So we passed that. That was down to at the, down at the state. state. Okay. Yes, we did. So great. We passed that with the help of our, our state rep, Nicole. Nicole Collier. Yeah, that's yes. great. Nicole is yeah. great. No, yes. Nicole is great, doing a lot of great yes. work. So she is. that's that's wonderful. Um, it's a tragic situation, obviously. These the, the people that come to you. Right. What what? Uh, uh, how can people help you? I mean, get you. Uh, what the community provide things that you need to help victims of violence? Well, the way that they can help us is go to my website, number one, for donations. But what we're trying to do right now is get two acres <laughs> and uh, to build a memorial sure. uh, for all of the loved ones that have gotten killed by gun violence. Uh, we have the uh, names of the kids in Uvalde also. We have the ones in Mississippi that got killed too. I know it's out of state, but we don't have anything for a memorial for our loved ones like we do with the veterans, the police, and the uh, military. So we need one somewhere where we can go and, you know, like that. Yeah. So I'm asking for two acres. <laughs> if you know someone that has two acres that can give it to, well, you know, that we'll can donate that. it yes. to us, though. So I know we'll talk. <laughs> <You'll> talk. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, when you went through this, what did... How did you get through it, I guess you'd say? There are lots of people out there, and, and yours is very extreme, losing a child. Um, but how, what, did you, what did you pull together to get through it? Okay, I kept busy. Mm -hmm. uh, I kept doing different things. I, I mean, I just put myself into work and my family because my daughter was going through it. My other, you know, right. siblings was going through it too. And I just kept myself busy, but I got to a point that year in November, you know, I had that heart attack. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I didn't even know I was having a heart attack. I was still, I, matter still of fact, going. I was at a at the funeral home mm -hmm. when I had the heart attack. You know, they was like, Melinda, you look kind of, you need to sit down. I was like, no. But when he said it, I sat down and then I knew there was something wrong. But uh, after that, you know, I just kind of start pacing myself but you know it's people out there that needs the help you know that's right they that's need right. the help and I feel like this is what God has led me to you know yeah. so that's what he I does do a lot now. of good things yeah for he, sure. does, he a lot. does and I've been blessed yeah. and everything you know my family is you know all good I still have my mother mm -hmm. which is 88 wow my wow. father is 87 wow so we have five generations right now wow Wow, so, good for you. We're here. Good for you, Jen. <laughs> what is one thing you want someone that's watching this to know? That we're here for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are here for you because uh, we know 
you, you just don't know. Right. If you haven't been there and done that, you, you just don't know. And hopefully no one and has to go through everybody it. Everybody can say, I hope you feel better. You know, you're giving your, you know, but sometimes you just have to get out. And what I do, mm. when I'm feeling that way, I get in my car, I drive from Fort Worth, take that circle around 20, <laughs> go to Dallas and make the circle back around 30. So wow. you just have to get your own comfort wherever you feel like is helping you. And, and we try to help as many people as we can. That's great advice, so, great advice. Yeah. Melinda, thanks for being here today. I Thank appreciate you. you and I appreciate how you're helping people through a situation or situations sometimes that they never expected. Never, you know, uh, and and um, you're just doing great work. Thank you. Thanks well, for being thank part you of our for community. Having me. Of course. Don't Good to forget see. my gala. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell people when is the gala? Oh, yeah, the gala is the second week in April of 2024. What we do at the gala, we uh, recognize people that have been out in the community doing great things that you normally wouldn't see them, but those are the ones that are on the ground. Making a difference. You know, making yeah. the difference. Yeah, thank so, you. So, yes, I will get you the there information. There we go. We'll put it on the calendar. Thank you <laughs> thank again you. for all you do. Appreciate okay. you being here. Thank, thank you, you, Thank you. Good to see you. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Fort Worth Forward. I hope you've enjoyed our guests. Go check out their websites and learn more about what they're doing. Come see the Botanic Garden out here. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful time of year. Also, if you have any ideas for guests, email us at district3 at fortworthtexas.gov or call 817-392-8803. Y'all have a great day.